In this video, I'm going to show you how to create spiral geometry following an existing curve. Something that you would see on a phone, for example, an old school retro vintage phone, such as from this photo reference. Now, to create this, you have to follow a few steps utilizing animation motion paths. And all it requires for you to do is to have a curve and then an object that you would want to attach itself to the curve and follow that direction. So in this case, we create a helix, define some properties for it, and this is what we use to follow this curve and create this spiral geometry. So let's begin. The first step is you need a curve. I already have a curve, but the way you create curves is you go to create curve tools and you can use either CV curve or EP curve. And you can actually use the Bezier curve as well or the pencil curve tool. I like to use the EP curve. So then uh, you begin to draw the curve along which you would eventually want your geometry, the spiral geometry to follow along. Now all curves you create will be created on top of the grid. So you just simply draw the shape of the curve that you would want, and then you would have to right click, hold, and then go to control vertex and reposition where the starting point of the curve would be and the ending point. So I already did this uh, right here. So I simply positioned the beginning of the curve coming out of the phone and then going into the bottom of the phone from the headset to the main body. So you just spend the time and uh, create that curve how you would want it. Then you need to create the geometry that will eventually transform itself and follow the shape of the curve. So because we need a spiral object, a spiral geometry, the wire, there is a primitive shape that we can use by going to create polygon primitives and helix. So create it and you just need to define the settings for it. Now the shape or the length of this will be your final geo. So if you are trying to create low poly, then you just need to go through the inputs and define how detailed or how low res would you want this helix to be. And if you're creating uh, more of a high poly object, then you just need to define the settings as well. So remember, this object will be your final geo. So you just need to define what that uh, geometry will do, what's the poly count is going to be. And uh, the distance matters. So this needs to be pretty tall because it needs to follow from beginning to the end of the curve. So it needs to have that distance. So of course this will vary depending on what type of curve you created. So I'm just gonna go through and let's say, let me zoom in a little bit closer. So let's say coils, let's just type in 20, see what that does. So that increases the amount of coils. Height, let's say I give more height. Let's try 100. So that's pretty good, that should cover the distance. Now I just need to come in here and uh, change the other settings. So let's say width, let's change it to one, maybe keep it at two for now. Let's change the amount of coils to uh, let's say 50. And I think it needs to be a little bit smaller. So let's say radius 0.2, let's uh, give more coils. Let's try 75. Subdivision axes, we can keep it at eight. Maybe we'll go down to six. Let's try four. No, I think six should be good. Let's keep it at eight. Then subdivision coil, uh, let's uh, lower this to 25, see what that does. So it's gonna give me a little bit less geo in the center uh, along the entire coil. So let's actually go down to 20. So you just go through and define what this coil, this helix will look like. Now this uh, height might be too much, but basically you would uh, create it, then follow the steps that I'm about to give you. And if it's not enough distance, then you might have to undo and optimize and redo the helix to make it bigger, make it smaller, or just go through and readjust the properties. Now, once you have the curve created, and it looks exactly how you would want it, coming out exactly from where you need it and ends up where you need it to be at the end. And then you have your geometry that you want to be positioned along the created curve. You select the curve first, hold shift, select the geometry second, then go to animation tab, and under constraint, we need motion paths. And I'm actually going to peel off this menu as a floating tab, as a floating menu, because we need two things from here. 
So the first one is going to be attached to motion path. So we need to attach the geometry to the curve, to the path. And we need to go to options for this. And let me reset everything to default. We are going to use time range, time slider. And then we need to change front axis. And you want to change this to Y. So front axis is going to be Y. Up axis is going to be X. And hit apply. So this will now attach the geometry to the curve, to the path. And if you begin to move the slider, it'll actually kind of follow that path and show you the animation from beginning to end. Now we're halfway done here, but it is now, the geometry is now attached. Now have the geometry selected. And let me close this menu. We are done with this. And we need to flow path object. This is our second step. So go ahead and select it. And again, it'll be under constraint, motion path, flow path object. So I'm going to, uh, the settings here, I'm going to keep everything at default, but we will change a few things in the input tab. So just uh, select flow path object. So we now trying to make the geometry follow the curve, follow the path more to what the shape of the path of the curve is. And if you change, you can see that it just kind of cycles back. So I'm actually going to keep it to what it gave me, whatever the time slider was at at the moment which was at 66, but yours might differ. So basically I'm not going to change the time slot I just said because I need to adjust a few settings here. So with the flow path object still selected and applied, go to the inputs and we need to adjust and give more T divisions. So there's just not enough divisions to make the geometry flow along the path, along the curve better. But if you change the T divisions to let's say 10, let's go higher, let's go 25. It's going to start following that path, that curve, much better. So if you want more precision, just increase your T divisions. Let's go try 40. Here we go. Something like that. So now we have a lot more precision of our geometry following the path. Let's try more. Let's try 50, see what that does. So that actually is too much. So you'll have to adjust this and see what's going to be the best result for you. And uh, once you kind of input the numbers, you can actually change the path, the time slider, and see if that gives you also better results based on the two divisions that you've increased and just kind of see where it begins and ends of uh, the animation itself. So here, right here, this is what I'm kind of looking for. Uh, actually, that's not it. So let me just kind of continue positioning this and uh, changing where my geometry begins. So you can see that at the very beginning, my geometry starts here at the top. But if I use the time slider, I can actually position the beginning and just kind of adjust that end position as well. And maybe let me try 35, maybe try 40 again. Let me reposition the time slider, see what that will do. And some of these uh, I will end up deleting. So like, see if I like this and I like how this looks, it goes in and out. I may have to uh, just maybe keep this, but I'll delete that geometry. So basically we just go through and adjust these based on the results that you are seeing in the viewport. So here I found that at certain marker on the time slider, this is the, this, uh, this is the position that I like and uh, the T divisions is up to 40 for me. So I like the shape where it's coming out and where it's going to end up. This is exactly what I would want. So I'm going to call this one done in terms of uh, trying to reposition and, uh, get the attachment correct and get it to follow the curve better. I can then come in here and begin to make my final adjustments by selecting the curve, going to uh, right click, hold in the empty space with the curve selected and go to control vertex. And then selecting my control vertices on the curve. And I can still adjust the curve and modify where my geometry and how it's, it's extruded and kind of follow, not really extruded, but how it follows the curve. So I can still reposition this. So before I do the history and before I do whatever else I need to do to this curve, I'm going to make my final adjustments while I still have the history and the attachment still in play. And let me find that other position like so. And let me come in and maybe modify some of these control vertices. So now I like where it is. I like the position. Maybe I come in in front view 
and uh, I can still adjust some of the other control points so maybe it's more on top of the ground plane like so let me make a few final adjustments uh, here we go and now once I like this and I made my final tweaks I'm gonna select my curve or my geometry and I'm gonna delete history just get rid of it so now that deformation the flow path object is not gone however I still have the animation attached to it so if I begin to use the time slider I still have it animated so the final step would be which you would want after you are done because I want this to be a static object that I do something with I don't want it to be animated because all I'm looking for is that spiral wire coming out of the phone I'm simply going to select the geometry and make a duplicate Control D and here's my final geometry that is no longer moving along the path and then I'm gonna take this and if I want to keep it I could uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it and I will I usually leave the original curve just in case I need to maybe to redo this but then here's my spiral helix geometry that has been modified to follow that curve and now I'm just going to position this back down actually let me bring it back up and final tweaks would be to delete the geometry that I do not need and just kind of uh, create an attachment you know delete some of the faces here just go through and just maybe go into the geometry and delete anything I do not need and clean this up so I'll just select all of these delete all the faces Maybe create a little bit of a detail where it's coming out. Same thing here for the bottom. There's a lot of uh, still spiral helix geometry that I, it's hidden inside the phone, inside uh, my other geometry. So I would go on top view and just delete all of this, like so. So this is how you create spiral geometry along a curve. Now, this tutorial was a bit more advanced. And if you are a beginner, just getting started with Maya, and still struggling getting a hand of how to model and how to UV in Maya, then I have a very extensive in-depth course, Maya Foundation. This is a complete home study guide that will get you started on how to use Maya, how to model with it, and how to UV your objects so you can texture them. So following through that course, it'll make some of the more advanced tutorials that you find a lot more easier. So you can get the course right now. You can download it by clicking the link in the description box. And if you're watching this on worldleveldesign.com, you'll find a link to download the course there as well.